Well, most of you know that Skyway is truly a prayer, a house of prayer. You know, Jesus said, my father's house will be a house of prayer for what? All the nations. And how do we pray? And sometimes you see people pray and you think, man, I can never pray like that. But one of the things that, Pastor Sam, I wanna say thank you to you publicly because Pastor Sam has such a gift for helping everybody to be able to pray. Can we thank the Lord for our brother? Just. We used to have a Wednesday morning prayer meeting that we'd run 25 to 50 people and we'd pray for three hours. And I mean, we were doing some serious prayer, but part of, part of what the Lord was saying, he said more people need to know how to pray. So we shifted prayer from Wednesday morning to Wednesday afternoon, you know, 6 p.m. We first made that shift, people were saying, well, you know, nobody can get here by six, but I am so thankful that I'm watching 150 plus people here praying every Wednesday night now. And we're learning how to pray. So tonight's session is on prayer. That's my intro to you. I'll turn it over to Pastor Sherry, Pastor Jeannie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I think we're ready to talk about prayer because I think I felt a lot of awesome prayer going on just in this whole time we've had to, to warm up. But we want to read a, a scripture just to start off this chapter on prayer and faith. And it's, it's Matthew 6, 9, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion. We're just, kind of, we're just kind of really immersing everybody in this Passion Bible because it's such a fresh, um, new perspective, and it's the Word of God, but it just brings it to life. So I'm, um, since we've been praying so much, I'm not going to start off with a prayer, <laughs> we're, but we are going to end up with a prayer, and we're going to do it in a good, timely manner. Okay, so Jesus said, whenever you pray, be sincere and not like pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying before others in the meetings and on the street corners. Believe me, they've already received their full reward. But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God, praying to him in secret. And your Father, who sees all you do, will reward you openly. When you pray, there's no need to repeat empty phrases, praying like those who don't know God. For they expect God to hear them because of their many words. But there's no need to imitate them, since your Father already knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this. Our Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom realm and cause every purpose to be fulfilled on earth, just as it is fulfilled in heaven. We acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. Forgive us of the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. So that's the Lord's Prayer in the Passion Translation. And Pastor Jeannie, she has just got, this, this woman is a treasure chest of prayer and how to teach others to pray, how to fire up other people to pray. So we just want to let her pour out some of these nuggets on us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Sherry. I'm so excited to get to share with you guys tonight. And my prayer is, just like what Pastor Greg mentioned earlier, you know, we used to have, mm, on a good day, maybe 50 people come out on Wednesday morning to pray. And uh, Pastor Greg and I talked about making a shift and adding the prayer portion onto the beginning of our destiny groups. And so many people that I've talked to um, last year and this year, they had shared that they have, they have a difficult time praying, especially praying out loud. So my prayer has been for each and every one of you that you really grow in your prayer life because it is so important. And I'm going to share a few things that I hope will encourage you and not scare you away. <laughs> So in this chapter, 
chapter 9 on prayer and faith, it contains three of the most important foundations for every Christian's life. Not just mine or Pastor Sherry's, but each and every one of yours. And I wanted to share um, what they were. So in verse 2 of what Pastor Sherry just read, it talks about when you give. It doesn't say if, it says when. And I know last week was on giving, so we won't discuss that any further today. The second one is when you pray. So that means everybody's called to pray. It's the foundation of your relationship with God. That's what Father God wants, is to have a relationship with you. And then the third thing in the Lord's Prayer that is so foundational also is verse 16 when it talks about fasting. And it starts out with when you fast. So yes, I know that's not everybody's favorite, but we are all called to give, we're all called to pray, and we're all called to fast. It doesn't matter what gift you have. Whatever gift you have, it should incorporate all three of those things in your relationship with the Lord. But then to be able to do all that, what do you have to have to mix up that cake to where it'll come out and it'll rise? You have to have faith. We have to incorporate faith when we give, when we pray, when we fast. And so I wanted to read to you from Hebrews 11.6 in the Passion what it says about faith. I'm just loving this Passion translation, and I hope all of you either have it on your Bible app or you get one, because I think you'll love it too. I think it's really anointed for this season. So, it says in verse 6, And without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. And don't we all want to please God? For we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real, and that he rewards the faith of those who passionately seek him. So, as I was studying about this, I thought... You know, the Lord's Prayer is really awesome, but at the same time, if you just keep saying it the way it's worded, it can become rote, and then it's not fresh. And God is a God that wants to have a relationship with you. He's not like any of the other false gods. You know, those false gods are dead, and you can't have a relationship with them. You can't talk to them. But God, that's what sets him up. One of the things that sets him apart is because he wanted a family. And to be able to have a family, if you had a family and you didn't talk, there wouldn't be much relationship and there really wouldn't be a family, would there? So that's really, you know, the basis of what prayer is. It's talking, talking to God. And not just in your head, but with your mouth. While you were while we were getting ready for this and um, praying about it, and she said, "Sherry, I just thought that the Lord was showing me, you know, Jeannie and I are like best friends and have been for a long time." And she said, "You know, what if I only talk to you maybe five minutes, and I kind of just did a little thing that maybe five minutes a day, maybe." And I just went through the same thing that I usually always say to, you know, and I said the same basic thing to you every day. And I didn't share with you. And I didn't really let you know what was going on in my life. And I didn't listen to you what was going on in yours. What kind of relationship would we have? Not a very good one. <laughs> no, not, not very close. good. So we do the same thing to the Lord. Yes. And Jeannie was just saying, you know, if we only spent five minutes a day 
and just kind of gave God a little list of what we wanted to pray for that day. Or even if we, um, you know, took longer or whatever, but maybe we did it once or twice a week. And she said, you know, you and Sam are married. And, you know, what kind of relationship would, would you have if you just said, well, you know, I have 30 minutes on Tuesday and 30 minutes on Saturday. And that's about it. And then we'll go to church together on Sunday. <laughs> you know, that's not a marriage. It's not a relationship. It's not that mutual giving. And that's really what prayer is all about, is knowing God and him knowing you. Amen. Yep. You know, God says that he wants, that, that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that scripture is in Proverbs 1824. And when I was studying this out today, doing some research on that scripture, uh, what came up um, was it mentioned that in the Bible, God himself is the first friend. You've heard Pastor Greg use the term, uh, the law of first mention. Well, in regards to this scripture in Proverbs 18, 24, it was saying that God himself used himself as the first friend. So that is very important. Anytime there is a, the first time it's mentioned in the Bible, it's something to take note of. So that's what prayer is all about. It's talking to our best friend. He is our best friend. He is the friend that sticks closer and a brother. And the way we're going to get to know him and build that relationship with him is praying to him, talking to him, and then not just having a one-way relationship, but then the other half of it is listening. If you talked all the time, who would listen? Somebody's got to do the listening part too. So we have to go back and forth with talking and listening. And that's how we build that relationship with him to where it becomes a lifestyle. And that's what I hope that you guys, you have your devotionals, you read your Bible, you pray, you spend some time worshiping, but then start building that relationship with the Lord out a little bit further to where you're talking to him you're thinking about him, even if you can't always do it out loud, to where it's every day. It's, it's several times a day. It's throughout the day. It's throughout the evening. And then uh, Sherry and I had another verse in regards to that, if you want to read that now, about praying without ceasing. Okay. We appeal to you. Oh, this is um, for Se First Thessalonians 5.14. Okay, no, it's 16. Seven. 16. <laughs> okay. Let joy be your continual feast. Make your life a prayer. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. Now, this is the scripture that we always hear about pray without ceasing. And how can you pray without ceasing? Make your life a prayer. You're continually open your ears are open, your heart is open to the Lord all day long. So even when we're talking about having an actual prayer time or that time when you're going with the Father alone and nobody sees you, like we were talking about the other scripture, you know, it's not something you do in front of people. Your, your communion with the Lord is you and God alone. But that lifestyle of prayer is that your ears are always open to him. Your spiritual eyes are always open to him, and you keep your heart open to him. You don't shut the door and say, well, I'm gone now. <laughs> well, I finished my five minutes of prayer, my 30 minutes of prayer, and now I just shut the door. A lifestyle of prayer is the door is never shut. You can talk to God while you're driving, while you're doing your job, as long as it doesn't hinder your job. <laughs> I mean, sometimes if it's a job that you can even just be talking to God while you're doing it, like vacuuming or doing dishes or cleaning the bathroom, those things that you can just always have that open communication with God. That's what a lifestyle of prayer is about. And we just want to pray for you now before you go into your group discussion that how many of you just want 
to have a closer relationship with God, that you develop that lifestyle of prayer even more. How many of you would say yes to God for that? I'm going to ask Pastor Jeannie to just pray a quick impartation prayer to you, and then you guys can have the remainder of time for your discussion, okay? Father, I just thank you for each one that's here tonight and those that are watching online. And Father, I pray that, that you would take this and that you would grow it, that this seed, Lord, would grow into a healthy plant a healthy tree that has much fruit. So, Father, I just pray uh, that every limitation be broken off of your people. Lord, every um, false belief system, uh, even the confessions of their mouth when they have said, I can't pray out loud. Lord, I pray that you would take all the fear and all the uh, condemnation out of your people's hearts so that they can start really developing that relationship with you to where they can talk to you freely and openly and, and listen and hear you talk back to them. Father, we just thank you that you love us, that you always, in your heart, what you wanted was a family. So we thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you say that you're well-pleased with us that we are your sons, we are your daughters, and you say we're our, we are your much-loved sons and daughters, and that nobody sleeps outside. We're all in the house. We're all in the family. And so, Father, we just thank you uh, for this time tonight. Lord, you take this. Lord, I pray that people would have dreams, they would have visions. The ones that uh, don't hear you will start hearing your voice. We thank you, God, that you know us, each one individually. You created each one of us uniquely, and you speak to us the way that you wired us. And how you speak to me will be different than how you speak to somebody else. And just like how I pray will be different than somebody else prays. We want to pray the way that you wired us to pray, not the way that somebody else does. So, Father, I pray that there would be a new, fresh revelation and freedom in building a strong prayer life built on faith. In Jesus' name, amen.